I'm thrilled to have House and Home right here in my very own home so I can share with you my recipe for mini chowder crab cakes. I've named these mini chowder crab cakes because they're more than just a crab cake. They have all the elements that you would find in a bowl of seafood chowder. And that includes delicious ingredients like cooked bacon, potato, and corn, in addition to the crab. First, you start by cooking some bacon until crisp. When it comes to cooking things like bacon, I like to use the Curadori enamelware because you really get that nice even browning and crispness to the bacon and you want to drain the bacon but leave the fat in the pan because the vegetables will then go in. Something to keep in mind is how small you dice up the vegetables. I do dice them quite small so that way you get a lovely taste of that medley with every bite. When you're making a seafood chowder, some of the basic vegetables are onion, celery, a little red pepper and of course corn. I like to add fresh thyme as I'm sauteing the vegetables to draw out that flavor, and it's that textbook chowder taste. While the vegetables are sauteing, I cook two and a half cups of diced Yukon Gold potato until tender. Then I drain it, put it in the bowl, and roughly mash it. A few lumps are okay. If you can, you wanna let your ingredients cool a little bit. Add your cooked vegetables to the roughly mashed potatoes and then stir just to combine them. I stir in the cooked bacon, and then I add in three quarters of a pound of crab meat, and you want to stir that in. Now you can buy tinned crab meat, you can buy pasteurized crab claws, or you know if you're lucky enough to get fresh crab, all the power to you. This is the point where I like to give the mixture a taste, just to see if I have to adjust the seasoning. A little added salt and pepper is all it needs. I break an egg and whisk it lightly and then stir that into the mixture. That'll be the final step that binds the crab cakes together. When it's time to pan fry the crab cakes, you wanna get your breading station ready. A couple of eggs whisked lightly and then a dish with breadcrumbs. And using an ice cream scoop so you get even and perfect portions, I scoop out little balls of the crab cake mixture. Shape them, dip them in the egg, then in the breadcrumb and then into a heated pan with a little bit of olive oil. Medium-high heat is best. I like to pan-fry the crab cakes in the Curadori non-stick pan. I can heat it up to medium, even medium-high, but then I'm using less oil than I might if I were using a traditional stainless steel pan. I cook them for about three minutes on each side until they're beautiful golden brown. In order to make your entertaining easy, you can prepare these and even cook them ahead of time. After you've pan fried them, lay them out on a baking tray and chill them until it's time to serve. Then to reheat, just put them in a 300 degree oven and it takes about 15 minutes and they'll taste like they just came out of the pan. I know this recipe has become a staple recipe in my house when it comes to entertaining when I want to impress guests and I wish the same for you.